Here at Nutrient Water, some of the most common inquiries that we receive are regarding irrigation controller programming. This video will take you through the programming process step by step. To begin with, let's familiarize ourselves with the controller. The model I have here is a Hunter X Core, which is a common residential irrigation controller. It has a central dial, a display screen, and a series of buttons beside the screen. Although I'm using an X-Core in this demonstration, all of the steps to programming it will be very similar to other controllers with the same central dial configuration. In fact, if you're using any Hunter controller with the same central dial, like the X2 or the P2C, all the basic programming will be the exact same as shown on the X-Core. Before we start programming, we need to make sure our controller is powered on. Once your controller has power, the screen will turn on, and if the dial is in the run position, it will display the time. Although if your controller is brand new or has incorrect programming, the display time won't be accurate. To update this, we're going to rotate the dial clockwise to the date and time position. From here, we can adjust the current year by using the plus and minus buttons. Once the year is adjusted, we can move on to the next screen by pressing the right arrow button. At this screen, we have the month and day as selectable options. To show which one is currently selected, the controller will be flashing one of those options. There's also small calendar icons numbered either 1 through 12 for the month or 1 to 31 for the days. Notice that when we change the day value, it also updates what day of the week it is. If you set the month and day correctly, but it displays the incorrect day of the week, go back and recheck that you've input the correct year. After programming the correct date, we can move forward to changing the time by pressing the right arrow button until we reach the next screen. From this next option, we can see the time and we can also see a small flashing AM icon. Remember that if you're ever unsure of what value you have selected, wait to see what area on the screen is flashing and that'll tell you. Since our AM symbol is flashing, that tells us that we can cycle between AM, PM and 24 hour time. Select your preferred option with the plus and minus buttons until you're happy to continue, then press the right arrow to move on. From here, we can go ahead and set the correct hour and then press the right arrow to select the minutes. Once these are set, you can rotate the dial to any other position and the settings will be saved automatically. Each different setting on the controller is programmed in the same way. The left and right arrows change which option is selected and the plus and minus arrows change the value of that option. To make sure we don't miss any settings, we're going to work our way around the controller dial clockwise, adjusting each setting as we go. Our next option is the start times feature. This feature lets us set the time of day we want our watering to come on. This is not the function where we program how long each station is watering for. This means if you only want to run your system once on your watering days, you should only set one start time. I'm setting this start time to begin at 6am, then checking to make sure all the other start times are still set to off. The next setting we're going to program is the run times. This is the setting where we can program how long each station will run for. Your controller will automatically cycle through each station that has a run time programmed in. So if you have a four station controller, but you're only running three solenoids, we can leave one of the stations set to zero. The final screen on this function shows the total runtime that has been set for the whole program. This can be useful to decide if the start time we've chosen is a good fit. The last essential feature we need to set is the watering days. This screen shows a raindrop symbol for each day of the week. Pressing the plus button will set the selected day as a watering day, then automatically select the next day. Pressing the minus button we'll put a strike through symbol over the raindrop, setting this day as a non-watering day. 
Across Australia, the regulations for watering days are different. In Western Australia, the Water Corporation allows two watering days for both scheme and bore water users. These days are based on the last digit of your house number. If you aren't sure what the watering days in your region are, check with your local water authority or feel free to contact your local Nutrium Water for advice. Once we've programmed all of these settings on the right hand side of the dial, the controller should be ready to function as an automatic system. We've programmed the date and time, what time it'll begin watering, how long it'll water for, and what days it'll water on. But you'll notice that there's still another side of the controller that we haven't touched. These options aren't essential for the automatic operation of the controller, but it's still useful to know what they do. If we continue around the controller, the next option is the seasonal adjustment setting. This option allows us to modify our existing settings with a blanket increase or reduction by a set percentage. So if it had rained during the week and you wanted to reduce your watering, but not fully switch it off, we can change the seasonal adjustment down to a lower percentage. This works the other way too. If the weather is forecast to be hot and we want to give our plants some extra water, we can set the seasonal adjustment to a higher percentage. Most of the time, we'll leave it set to 100%. The next setting on the controller is the solar sink setting. This will only function if you're using an external solar sink module. In this case, we aren't using a solar sink. So when you use this function, the display will show an error. Continuing around the dial, we have the manual setting. This is used to operate individual stations one at a time. To do this, we select the station we want to run, then set the time we want it to go for, and rotate the dial back to run. To tell if the controller is watering, we should see a pump icon. To stop the manual run, we rotate the dial to the last position on the controller, the off position. In addition, if you leave the dial set to off, the controller will not automatically come on at the times we've programmed in. This is mostly used for when sprinkler regulations prohibit any automated watering. Finally, we can return the dial to the run position. From this position, the controller will automatically come on at the designated times that we've set. After going through each option on the controller, our watering cycles should be set correctly. However, there are some more features left on the controller that can be useful to know. Earlier, when we programmed our controller, we put everything on the same program. This means that everything we set will all water at the times we specified on the days we specified. However, if we wanted to run something outside of these parameters, we need to create another program. Adding another program is useful to isolate areas of your garden that have specific watering needs. During our basic programming, we left station 4 unused. So in this example, I'm going to add a program to separately run station 4 in the evening, one day a week. You might have noticed that we never used this round PRG button during our basic programming. This button's function is to cycle between programs A, B and C. All of our previous programming was done on program A. So we're going to create our next one on program B. Just like we did before, I'm going to create a start time for this program. Then we'll go over and select which station we want to run and for how long. Finally, I'll input the watering days just like we did before. Now, when we set our controller to run, it will automatically run through program A and program B at their respective times. At this point, we've gone through all the main features of the controller. These features will appear on most residential irrigation controllers in some form or other. 
However, Hunter controllers have a range of hidden features and shortcuts that can make programming quicker and easier. I'm going to go over some of the most useful ones. I'll demonstrate how you can do a quick manual run, how to save your set programming and reload it again, and how you can do a full factory reset on your controller. Firstly, a quick manual start can be done from the run setting. If you look to the right arrow button, it has a manual symbol on it. Although this will also work on a controller that doesn't display this symbol, like the Hunter X2. If you hold down this button for 3 seconds, the controller will initiate a manual run of your full program. Before the run starts, you can select which program you want to manually operate with the PRG button. You can also override the time set for each station with the plus and minus buttons. Once you leave the controller idle for 2 seconds, it will begin a manual run and the pump icon will flash. While this is running, we can advance to the next station at any point by pressing the right arrow button. We can then stop the run by switching the controller to the off setting. Next, the X-Core has a feature that allows us to save our current programming as a preset. To use the save function, have the dial set to run and hold down the plus and PRG buttons until these three line icons appear on the screen. Then release the buttons and the icons will move across the screen before displaying done. This has saved all our current program information. We can then feel free to change any of the settings and reload our preset again. To retrieve this information, we do the same thing except we hold the minus and PRG buttons this time. This can be a good tool to remember if you're constantly updating settings on your controller. Finally, one of the most useful features that this controller has is the total reset function. The total reset will wipe all programming from the controller, including the date and time. This can be done by holding the PRG button and then pressing the reset button on the side of the controller. You may need to use something narrow to press the reset button. I'm using the lid off of a pen. It's important to note that I'm holding the PRG button and just pressing the reset button once. Keep holding the PRG button down until the display says done. This has now reset all the settings of the controller back to their factory defaults. This reset is super helpful if there are incorrect settings on the controller that you are unaware of. Just perform the reset and go back to the start of the video to reprogram the controller from scratch.